Hello everyone, I'm Michael Ingledew. I'm all about making you successful with your technical documentation and technical information strategies. Now, this week I want to talk specifically about how do we take our S1000D content and how do we turn it into something that makes sense or how we can turn it into something that's coherent. So we're going to get into that this week. That's right. This week, I want to talk about working with something called the S1000D publication module. Now, working with the S1000D publication module is actually relatively straightforward. Uh, we cover it a great deal on my training courses, and we have some TDIQ tutorials on how the publication module works. And if you are joining us at TDW Live this year, we're actually taking this technical manual and we're converting it to S1000D, we're converting it to XML, we're converting it to other outputs. And one of the things that we are going to be looking at is how I define a publication module from this technical manual, as well as a DMRL, SNS and that kind of stuff. So we're going to be looking at that. Now, for me to show you how and what I do to define a publication module, I'm going to use some software. And that software that I'm going to use, I'm not being sponsored or paid to mention it. If you go and download it and work with it, that's up to you. You can do whatever you like. The version of software that I have is a paid piece of software. So what I want to do is show you some alternatives so you don't have to go and buy a piece of software. So let's get into my software. Now, the first piece of software you can go and download and have a look at is something called FreeMind. It's an open source piece of software, completely Java based, and you can follow along exactly what I'm going to show you with that piece of software if you wanted to do so. Now, halfway between that and what I use is something called XMind. Now, XMind is, they have a free version and they also have a premium version. Now, the free version, I've used XMind a lot over the years. There was some capability and functionality that it didn't have that I wanted to use that has um, now, I believe it been introduced, but I actually went off and bought something called Mind Manager. Now, Again, not being sponsored. The This is a great piece of software, works on Mac, works on PC, also works on my mobile device, also works on uh, my tablets. So I can take Mind Manager with me wherever I may need to go. So you, they do have a 30-day trial, so you can go down and uh, download it. And if I open Mind Manager, you can see that I've, I'm... I've got a whole raft of things that I can actually work with. Now, what we want to talk about today is something called the S1000D publication module. Now, the S1000D publication module is uh, the method used or the preferred method for bringing together our S1000D content. So what that means is that we can bring all of that modular content, all of that if you like, that fragmented pieces of information and we can bring it together and put it into a logical structure so that it actually makes sense to a published output. So now I have to go through a process to be able to define a publication module. So let me show you very quickly how I go through this. Now, the reason that we might want to do this is simply because if we create a publication module with our structured editor or in XML, or we A, have to hope that our validating partner or somebody out there has a piece of software that can read it, or B, they, they actually know how to look at XML and they can read XML. So I like to use this method because it's actually something that's visual. It makes a tremendous amount of sense. And it's something that they can see very quickly if it's a structure that they like or they agree with. 
So if I click on the tree map is the one that I always like to use and just simply create a map and I can drag this to the top here, make it a little bit smaller down here. Now, what I can do is I can just say my manual is going to be here. And if you don't know how the S1000D publication module works with the PM entries and those kind of things, then, you know, we do have some training on that. So you can look at how those PM entries work. But very quickly, we can start chapterizing or breaking this down into sections for our technical manual, as you would expect with a traditional piece of technical manual. So there are little plus signs that appear either side of this as I come down. So I can start creating publication module entries for our manual. And here we might have prelims or, um, or our front matter, if you like. And some of this stuff is auto-generated. We can actually auto-generate some of this pieces of information. And we're going to look at some of that very shortly. And here we can say that maybe we have a chapter one. And I'm just making this up off the top of my head, by the way. Chapter two, chapter three, which we can then start putting inside of here, maybe some additional nested pieces of information that we might want to drop inside. Uh, so we might have a section or subsection. And very quickly, you can see that I am making a structure that my user can look at without having to worry about any of that XML tagging or any of the structure that I might want them to review. So at this point, you can see very quickly we have what is known as a structure for us to bring together. Now, in all of these sections here is then what we might have is a reference to a data module. And this is where it brings in our technical content from those data modules. So very quickly, very easily, I can create structure that resembles maybe something like this old Morris manual or something specific that my customer is looking for. Let's have a look at a couple of publication modules that I've created already. I'm having to blank out some of the areas here clearly because uh, I've got some customer stuff here. Now on screen right now you can see that from this technical manual, this old 1100 technical manual, I've just created a very, very monolithic publication module, which is if I expand any of these sections, you can see we have the chapterized information or the section subsection information and the references to those particular data modules that may exist, whether it's a functional description, physical description, maybe it's a task or a procedure, any of those things. So what happens at this point is our publishing engine will be able to read the publication module and say, ah, at this point, we know that we have to insert this particular data module or this particular piece of information. Now, the publication module can be a very complex piece of structure if we want it to be. So we can actually reference other publication modules if we wanted to. I've seen a customer's publication module that actually had seven volumes of publications nested inside a high level publication module. And then you have to print that. So you can see that the structure can and is very monolithic. And so we're now bringing that content together to resemble a traditional technical output that we would expect from a technical publication. And that is the role that software plays, is how you will then be able to manipulate and conf configure that output to your customer or to your project or to your organizational publication requirements. And that's something we cover a great deal on my training. Now, something that we hear a lot at the moment as well is people are talking a great deal about component maintenance publications. And the component maintenance publication is also using the publication module structures or methodologies that are behind it. And the component maintenance publication, so these publication modules can support 
very small, self-contained pieces of technical content, or they can go all the way out to supporting multiple volume type output information, as I've just mentioned. And you can see that these publication module entry elements here, so we have front matter, functional information, maintenance and servicing information, all of these references underneath would then pull off and go to specific data modules. And so this is how I visualize a publication module for a customer, for them to be able to look at very, very quickly and decipher if that's how and where they want their technical content to be placed. Now, as I've mentioned already, a lot of the front matter information can actually be auto-generated by good pieces of software and things like list of terms, list of abbreviations, acronyms, uh, list of effective data modules, those kind of things can all be automatically created by good publishing tools. Now, that also requires that our content has been created correctly as you would expect in terms of S1000D or structure so that is how I work with S1000D publication modules. If I need an external partner or supplier or a customer to agree that output with me, the structure, the physical structure of a technical output. So if you want to learn more about the publication modules, we've announced two workshops that are coming up. I'll put the links down below. We're starting an online workshop in December via TDIQ, so you can sign up to that. Or we actually have just announced our first workshop for 2020, which will be happening in the Bristol area, where we're going to be going over XML and S1000D. And we're going to be looking at things like the publication module, how they work, why they work, and then how can we actually configure that output to make something sensible for our end user. So I hope you found that useful. What tools do you use to create your publication modules? I know there are lots of other methods out there. Some tools will automatically create publication modules for you based on SNS and that kind of stuff. Let me know what tools you use. I hope you found that useful and interesting. Please do like, subscribe, share, and uh, do send me your comments on any tutorials you would like me to cover. I'm Michael Ingledew. I'm all about making you successful with your technical documentation and technical information strategies.